Hello everyone, welcome again to Mike's SAS Tutorials. Today I'm going to be jumping right into the SAS program, just where we left off last time. And I'm going to be showing you today how to read in external data from another source. Now oftentimes your data is stored in some other file, such as a text file, an Excel spreadsheet, um, a SAS data file, and so forth. Uh, it's especially the case that you'll be reading in external data files when you're dealing with very large data sets or data sets, data sets for which you do not personally collect the data. Uh, if I'm entering my own data, I personally prefer to enter it through Excel and read it into SAS and then do all the statistics there within the SAS environment. Uh, it can be a lot more useful when I need to add in data later in a familiar way. However, sometimes I consult with professionals also who ask me to do their statistical analyses and for that I'll need to read in their data files into SAS. Now before I get into that, I want to uh, suggest a little tip or trick that you can uh, use when you're learning new procedures in SAS um, and that is to create your own uh, cheat sheet of sorts I call it a templated code file uh, here is mine it's rather weird in this larger text layout hopefully you guys will be able to see this a little bit better than the old videos um, but when you templatize your code in this way it's it's really useful when you want to make sense want to, want it to make sense for you. Um, for example, if I know that a procedure needs the file name, but I forgot to include the file extension, I make sure to say that I need to include the file name with the extension here for importing an Excel file type, for example, using proc import, which we'll cover today. So I'll say your file location here, including the .xls extension, and that will remind me when I'm typing this in. I'll just have to replace this with that file location, including the ex XLS extension. Um, it's really useful uh, when you're learning SAS to do this templatizing because you can refer to the procedures later on if you don't remember exactly how to do it. Like, it's been, I mean, more than six months since I've used proc import, so I would just be able to copy and paste this right into my editor and right away fill it in without having to remember oh what was it that I had to type in for the DBMS statement and and so on. So with that in mind uh, today I'm going to be covering how to import different data uh, with a variety of methods. Uh, I'll cover two Im import methods. The first will be using the in file statement directly within a data step and that will allow you to import text files and so forth. Uh, the second will be using the import procedure proc import that you got to see a little bit right there uh, in my templated code. I'll use actually this exact same code for showing you how to import Excel file types. Um, it's useful to use proc import when you want to import Excel file types or other file types uh, without having to deal with the data step and then running code using any like proc print or proc contents or whatever procedure you want on the data without having to ever use a data step. If you want to then later on do some data manipulation with a data step, you could use the data, you could use the proc import then a data step and be able to bring it in. Uh, so as an example, I've included my own templatized code for um, importing data using a in file statement and I'm going to go ahead and copy it here. You can see, let me bring it in with the comment. You can see this exact code in the YouTube uh, information below the video and you can copy it directly from there into your SAS environment so that you can go, go with me as we, as we fill this out. So here I'm going to show you how to fill in the, the different fields I've put in here so that you can import using the in file statement. So for this data set I'm going to call it uh, let's call it in file main and the in file here I say your file location here including the .txt extension. So this is uh, the in file statement is a, a rather nice method for when you're importing a uh, text file and you can usually open them up see here's a text file that's spaced and limited delimiting uh, a space delimited meaning that there's a going to be a space in between each different number. You'll sometimes have comma delimited where there are these commas in between the different values that are in your data. So if you had three variables like you have here x, y, and z, it would be x, comma, y, comma, z. But now this is a space delimited file, so if I want to bring this into 
SAS from the folder here, I could copy this address by clicking on the bar itself. And here you can see it's C colon slash my SAS files. Copying that using Control C and then pasting it right here. Now remember, I always forget this myself, I want to include the file name as well as the file extension. File extensions are just a way for your computer to recognize uh, what kind of file it's reading. Now there's this one next part, it's called LREC L equals, and it says here, a logical length of your data to encompass the entire data set. Well, the logical length is how many rows across or how many columns across your data is going to read. And in this case, I know that my data is really not that large. It's one, two, three, four, five, five columns wide. I can go ahead and just put in some small value like 100 to make sure that encompasses the entire data set for sure. Now, if you're dealing with really large data sets like from a cohort study or from some national study, you might want to have something that's a million or a billion or whatever uh, columns long. This next part, DLM equals, specifies the delimiter. Now, I have here a comma, but I know that it's a space delimited file, so I'm going to replace this comma with a space. So now when SAS reads this one part, it's going to say that I'm going to create a data file or a data named in file main. I'm going to read in the file C my SAS files main.txt with a logical record length of 100 and it's going to use a space delimiter. Now here the next part is just like what we've covered before with the input statement but it wants to know what the variable names are so that when it reads in the file it knows that the first column is going to refer to the first variable in which case it's going to read in the value 1 so we know that we have three variables x, y, and z so let's type that in x, y, and z and then we're done. That's all we need to do to bring in this text file with these one, two, three uh, rows or observations of data. So now if I close this and I select this code I can hit the running man to run it and it's already done. It's really fast. Now if we look at the log we're going to see an error come up. It says here, invalid data for x in line 1, 1 to 1, and then again for y and for z, and it's going to have this weird line. Now the reason is, is that when it's reading in our data from main, it's reading at the first line, and it's reading it as though that is a value, as though that is a number but we know that it's not. We know that that first row represents the variable names. So what we need to do is we have to add one extra option here, one statement that says first obs equals two. Now that specifies that it's going to have to read at the second line for the first observation and then the second and then the third. And now that we have that and we hit run, we're going to see that there are no errors. Everything worked well. It said here, three records were read from the in file the minimum record length was five remember we saw that the ring length was five even though we specified a higher value and it says here the data set work dot in file main has three observations and three variables which is perfect i want to call your attention here real quick to this work dot in file part this work dot is what we call the work library it's storing it right here in our explorer under the library work. Now we covered in the last uh, tutorial the tutorial that SAS uses different libraries to store different files and the work is something of a temporary library. But let's say you wanted to have your own library, some folder like we have here in the my SAS files folder um, and we want to point SAS to that. We can create a, what we call lib name or library name and we can give it some name like home and we can give it the address of this folder when we run this now what SAS is going to do is it's going to create a home folder a home library because we gave it this name home and it's going to allow you to store files in there and here we can see that we have one file main that was saved in later on as a SAS dataset main that becomes really important if you want to import 
using a different method uh, in the data step as well. So let's say data sas format. And we're going to use this method of importing using what we call the set statement. The set statement is only useful or is only used when you have SAS formatted data directly and that's this kind of SAS data set type, right? It's not a text document, it's not an Excel file type, it's a SAS file type. Uh, these, if you go into their properties, have this SAS7B.file extension and that's the way that SAS, it's the way that SAS stores its own personal file types. So we know we have main and we're going to set it. However, to set it, we have to specify that library name. And we do home.main. Now when we run this, it's going to create a new data in our work file, or our work library, called SAS format. So that is another way to import in the data step. If you wanted to export from the data step, all you would have to do is specify the uh, library name first, SAS format, set from wherever it is. It could be from the home library or it could be from the work library, and let's say in file main, and then run that. And when we would run that, oh, sorry, we have to also specify this little bracket here before we run the lib name. And now when we run this, it's going to create SAS format, SAS formatted data set. And that's a way you can export from the data step, data step directly. Uh, now, I mentioned it that we're going to be importing an Excel file type using our templated code. And I have the same templated code that I'll be including in the YouTube comment or the YouTube information below the video right here and it's just like the other templated code where all we have to do is fill out the data fill out the information so here the import procedure is pretty simple uh, we have to specify what we're going to call it and I'm going to call it imported Excel I have to specify where the data file is located including the .xls extension and it's again in this my sas files It's called main, and it's a .xls file. And it includes now this dbms equals excel, which is kind of like a translation system that the import procedure uses, and this replace statement. And the replace statement is just going to tell SAS uh, to replace the data if it exists. And here I've previously run the code, so I can show you that the imported excel data exists, and it's now going to replace it using this replace statement. Um, the sheet equals statement is used for Excel. It's an optional statement if you have your data stored in a different sheet within the Excel sheet. Uh, in this case, main.xls is storing it in sheet 1. This is, I think it's capital, capital sensitive, so make sure that you type it in it exactly. Sheet 1. There's a sheet 2 that has nothing in it and a sheet 3 that has nothing in it. So I want to make sure that I'm importing the correct sheet. The other row, the other statement that's optional, says get names equals yes or no. And here I say first row equals variable names. This is a note to myself I included so that I made sure to include made sure to include this get name statement if the first row did contain the variable names, which it does here. So I say get names equals yes. Uh, there are a couple other optional statements. Uh, mixed yes or no refers to data types. If you have numeric and character variables, then you would use this mixed equals yes. Use date uses, um, it formats Excel formatted dates into SAS formatted dates. And uh, it's kind of complex how SAS stores dates, but for now, let's go ahead and just remove these extra optional statements and run our code. And here you see that the imported Excel was brought in again. It replaced it. And if I go to the log, I can see that work.importedExcel data set was successfully created. So it was imported correctly.
So those are three methods of importing data. If you have text files that are delimited, SAS files that uh, require a lib name, or Excel files that you need to use the proc import. Uh, one last, I guess, comment is that the proc import, the import procedure is a very powerful one in that it can import not just Excel, but Access, uh, CSV, uh, DBF, and other file format types. Uh, only thing you have to change is this DBMS equals. So you can set it to equal CSV if it's a comma separated values file. You can say uh, DBMS equals access and you're going to have to add some extra file information if it's an access data, excuse me, database, or you're going to use this DBMS equals DBF it's, if, if, it's, if it's a DBF file type. So those are the three different methods I've shown you here. Uh, next time, uh, please tune in and we'll go over SAS more. All right, thank you so much and have a good day.